be starting in this series and we're going to be talking about growth. And today we're going to talk about a principle. It's called growing through learning. How many believe that if you learn, you're growing? Growing through learning. Um, it, it could have been called, uh, I, I am a disciple too, because the word disciple really means a learner. So when I say I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ, I'm just saying I'm a student. I learn from him. I apply what I'm learning. It also means a follower of Jesus Christ's teachings. Now, the word learn is a simple word. It means to acquire knowledge or skill. Acquire by study, instruction, and exposure to example or experience. This is what we do. When I, when I put myself in a room where people are teaching me or they've accomplished, I'm exposing myself to greater knowledge. I'm exposing myself to wisdom. I'm learning. I'm understanding the content. This is what's happening. I'm growing. Now, before God can do more in your life, he needs some room to cause the growth. He needs some expansion within our minds to receive it. You will never receive more than you're thinking. So that, that means before God wants to get, get you something, he expands your faith to receive it. Uh, if, you want, if you want your marriage to become better, do you understand that could become better if you start thinking differently? You don't need a new marriage, you need new thinking. I, I, I do a lot of counseling, and when I do counseling, um, this is usually how it starts off. How it starts off is the, the husband and wife come in and they got a long list of all the bad things that their spouse needs to change. But they never put themselves on the list. It's always the wife has the husband list and the, and the husband has the wife list. So they really think that they're going to get me. This is what they think. They're going to manipulate me to be on their side to beat up their husband or wife. And I tell them, I'm not on either one of your sides. Both of you decided to be in this marriage and both of you need to change. And well, you need to change. First, you're thinking. And then I tell them something like this. Right now, if I was able to do this, if I was able to take my mind the way I think and put it in your husband and I was able to take Lisa's mind and put it in your wife, even though you'd have the same body, live in the same house, you'd have a different marriage, not because of location, you'd have a different marriage because of mentality. And that just means when your mind is changing and being transformed, you could start getting different results, different emotions. If you want growth in your life, you're going to have to grow. So what does the Bible say about learning? This is what it says. The purpose of learning, this is one of the things it says, is to teach us how to live a disciplined and successful life. Or live disciplined and successful lives. Look at Proverbs 1.3. It says, their purpose, the purpose of the Proverbs, the purpose of the instruction, the purpose of the word, is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to help them do what is right, just and fair. So the scripture is meant to show you what's right and wrong. But knowing what's right and wrong is one thing. Applying it, we understand, is another thing. I've heard people tell me, pastor, don't preach to me. I already know what the Bible says. I've read the Bible from cover to cover. And they're trying to get me to shut up because they're saying, I already know what you're saying. But the reason I'm speaking to them is because they don't know it. Well, how do I know they don't know it? Because you only know it when you apply it. If you know, know the knowledge of something and you don't apply it, it does you no good. It's in the application of what you're learning that causes the change, that causes the miracles, that causes the breakthrough, that causes the deliverance, that causes the, provo the promotion, that causes the purpose, that causes the prosperity. How many want change in your life for the better? Now we're going to have to learn. Someone say learn. It could be different. Stop thinking you're going to keep on acting the way you're acting, thinking the way you're thinking, and life is going to give you better results. So the word discipline has to do with one, it's, it, this is what it defines, it's the definition, one who lives and behaves in accordance 
to instructions and training. One who lives according to the instruction and training. So we, I, the, why do I need to practice discipline? I cannot wait to like feel like doing or making the right decision. I'm going to have to practice discipline. I'm going to have to learn how to do what's right when I don't feel like doing what's right. That's why it takes discipline. You're actually a disciplined person when you know you should work out and you actually work out. How many, how many know it takes discipline to show up to the gym? The other day, I, I bought a gym membership. I ain't lying. I, but the truth is, I go less to the gym than I go to the gym. But the other day, this is crazy, I was near the gym. Like, I know I should go to the gym, but understand, knowing I should go to the gym does not produce results. I can't be looking myself in the mirror and hoping I got six packs because I have a gym membership. Now, if, if one of the trainers tells me, uh, and I say, I want you to start training me, he goes, can you at least show up? Don't you preach to me. I already know that you got to show up. Stop judging me and condemning me. I, I, I feel guilty enough. I already know I need to go. What's going to happen is that, first of all, that trainer is going to think I'm cuckoo. And, and the guy that signed me up to say, why would you sign up if you're fighting, showing up. So the other day, I'm close to the gym. This is what happened. There's a, there's a, there's a, Arrowhead Credit Union is near the gym. It's a sporter in Highland. So I went over the Arrowhead Credit Union to deposit a check, but they were closed. And what I hear inside of me is you're already here. Why don't you just go to the gym? It's right there. But there was something within me to say, not today. Not today. I got things to do. And then this is a conversation. So what do you have to do? So this conversation, well, I don't have much to do, but, but you just, right there, you just take your, hey, you ever have these conversations with yourself? I'm going to tell you this. You're only wise, you're only smart, and you're only disciplined when you say yes to what you need to do, even when you don't feel like doing it. So what I did was, it didn't caught, it, didn't, it wasn't much, but I turned towards the gym. Then I, I parked my car, big step. Then I close the door, I walk out, and I start walking towards the gym. Yeah, I am so disciplined. I'm just kidding. That was a good example, but, but sometimes I hear the voice of what I should do. I hear I should go to church. I hear that I should join Holy Warriors. I hear that I should study the Bible. I hear that I should wake up in the morning and put God first. I, I, I hear that I should cut that out and put this in my life. I hear that I should be kind. I hear that I should be loving. I hear that I should be forgiven. And there's times in my life that I'm not disciplined. And you know what that means? I'm not growing. And if I'm not growing and applying what I'm learning, it doesn't matter how many times I come to church. If I'm hearing and I'm not doing, I'm not becoming wiser. I'm becoming more foolish. Or dumber. Hey, I'm gonna well, the Bible talks like this. So I'm going to put some stuff in there. All right, so, all right. Successful. So if you apply the word, right, you apply discipline where you're learning, you'll become successful. I want, this is the truth. It's impossible to think right and live right and not end up having a successful life. You know what causes lack of success? Is we're thinking wrong and doing wrong. But we're still expecting great results. There's a way to do stuff. The word successful means one who has achieved success, goals, dreams, prosperity, honor, wealth, victory, peace, harmonious relationships, and health. And we can have all that. The second thing the Bible talks about when it comes to learning, teach a wise person and they'll learn even more. A person that's applying the word, they're, they, this is what they call it, they're teachable. And, and the reason... If you teach a wise person, they learn more. I'll tell you why. Because wise people are getting results. 
They're starting to succeed in areas that others aren't succeeding. They're unlocking their life. They're unlocking their potential. They're experiencing joy that other people don't have. And since they found the secrets is in wisdom and learning to live right and learning, how, and learning the word, this is what they say, I want more of it. How many know you could be happier? How many believe you could be more successful? How many believe you could have better, greater relationships? Do you believe that? Well, there's a way to do it. Hear the word and apply the word. Look at this scripture in Proverbs 9, 9. It says, teach a wise person and they will become wiser. Teach a wise person and they become wiser. Teach someone that's skilled and they'll become more skilled. They're here to learn. You need to be careful that you're not in a room like this that's teaching you keys to unlock your life, unlock your dreams, take you to a place to find some joy, some peace and purpose. And you're in this room and this is what's happening. You're thinking about something out there instead of saying, no, I'm not leaving here the same way I came in. I'm not wasting my time. I'm not no Sunday Christian that shows up religiously to this place. I am a student and I need change. My life depends on it. My kids are dependent on it. My business is dependent on it. My career is dependent on it. I need to come here and I need to learn something. I am here leaning in. I'm writing down what I'm learning. And then after I leave this place, I'm applying it because I'm a wise person. And the, the wise people, the more you teach them, the more they grow. I love it. Look, it says, teach a person who does right and they will learn even more. Teach a person that does right and they will learn even more. A person that wants to learn, these people learn more. I remember having a young man in my house. He was actually living in my house. And he was living in my house um, because his family had problems and and, and they came to live with me. And when they came to live with me, um, I, I didn't bring him over just to eat the food. I brought him over to disciple him, to train him, so that he could have a better life in the future. And I knew if he would change his thinking and start thinking, knowing what's right and wrong and developing a discipline to learn to do what's right, that he would not be driven by his emotions, he would not be driven by his lusts. He would not be live, driven by circumstances, but he'd be driven by wisdom. That he'd live a life of wisdom. I knew this, that young man didn't matter what family he came from. It didn't matter that he didn't have a daddy. It didn't matter that his, his dad was a drug addict and abandoned him. It didn't matter the abuse that he went through. If he could start changing his thinking, if he could start thinking successful thoughts, if he could start learning what's right or wrong and then develop the discipline to apply it, I knew that kid could succeed. You know what I love about growth? Any one of us can grow. Right? So now, I began to go, I go look, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to take some time out on my day, uh, every week. You don't have to do it every day, but every week on Tuesday mornings, we'll come together and I'll spend an hour and a half with you. And I'm going to teach you what the Bible teaches so you can start succeeding in life. I can look everything around you here, look at everything around here. It's all provided for. And the reason it's provided for, I'll tell you why. It's because of the way I think. And I've been following Jesus. And, and if you want to start having a life that's different than the life that's been passed on to you, you can have it. Because God wants you to have it. And there's a way to have it. But you got to change your thinking. And if you could change your thinking, you could become successful. And you could have successful relationships. You could have successful emotionally. You could be successful in business. You could be successful in education. There's nothing that you touch that won't, get, that won't grow. You'll start seeing that because you're thinking right and you're doing right. And if you're thinking right and you're doing right, there's, it's impossible for you not to succeed. Any area that you're not succeeding in, understand, it's not because you're a victim. It's you're doing it wrong. It's getting quiet in here. LA, you still with me? Pomona, you still with me? New Mexico, are you there? Right. So he told me when I had the first meeting, he came in real negative. <sighs> I guess just first day. He just, I gotta get him going. We're gonna start coaching him. 
So, I, you know, I excuse the first day having a bad attitude, no big deal. He showed up late to the meeting, no biggie. We're going to teach him. We've got mercy and teach him. So, uh, so the first day I, I taught, um, we we're done. He didn't say thank you or nothing. I, I, okay, he's just learning. Right? Next day, next week, shows up still with a bad attitude. By the third week, his attitude's not getting better, it's getting worse. After three teachers, either I'm a bad teacher or he's a bad student. <laughs> but this is what I've learned. I've heard people say, well, I need to be fed. No, you know what needs to happen is you got to make up your mind that I'm no longer going to live an unwise life. I'm not, I'm here to learn. I am here to grow. I am here to learn how to be successful in everything I do so I can pass on that lifestyle to others, including my boys and my girls and my family and those that I'm leading. How can you teach someone else to succeed in the area you're not succeeding? And in. Someone say, learn. learn. The, the wise learn even more. So this is what I had. I go, what's going on? You know, you have kind of bad attitude towards the learning. He goes, I don't want to do this. I don't want to learn about all this stuff. I go, do you understand? I'm just teaching you how to be successful in life. He goes, I, I, I don't, I don't care. So you tell me, okay. I go, do you understand if you don't learn this stuff, you're going to end up homeless? If you don't learn this stuff, you're going to end up a drug addict? If you don't end up learn this stuff, you're going to end up in prison? If you don't learn this stuff, you're not going to see, do you have any dreams? Do you have a vision for your life? And this is what happened. He told me, I don't want to learn. I go, okay. I can't force it. I, and I, go, I, go, look, I go, young man, I love you. When you want to learn, let me know. But I can't continue teaching you if you don't want to learn. Because teach the wise and they will learn. But if you don't want to be wise, you want to be a fool. Like that's why in the hood we call each other fools. What's up, fool? They're right. And we call ourselves like, what's up, fool? You fool too? You hear what's right, you don't do it too, right? Me too. Now, you gotta, if someone calls you a fool, say, no, I'm not a fool. I was just kidding. It's just lingo from the hood. No, I'm not a fool. I won't even let you play with that. You know why? I'm not a fool. I'm wise. I hear the word. I do the word. I succeed in life. Everything I touch that applies God's principles works out. It grows, and it's healthy. You do not need a new wife. You need a new mind. And some of you guys think you need a new job. You don't need a new job. You need a new mind with a new attitude about your job. And some of you don't need to make more money. You need to learn how to manage the money you got. Come on, give some praise. Come on, God's going to give somebody a breakthrough. God said, I'm trying to get some knowledge to you. I'm trying to get some wisdom to you. I'm trying to get some breakthrough for you. Some of you right now ready to give up on your business. And God said, I gave you a kingdom business. Don't you give up on that business. Right now you need to get some education. Find someone that succeeded in that business. Start, start taking some notes. It's not time for you to give up. It's time for you to grow in your business, in your ministry, in your marriage. Come on, say not, right now I'm not throwing in the towel. I'm going back to school. Right? Some of us say mentality. So if I, if I take Christian and I, t I do a lobotomy on him and I, I, I change his mind, I put his mind in a, in a doctor's mind and I take the doctor's mind and put it in Christian, this is what would happen. We'd have to call Christian Dr. Christian next week. His body's the same, but he has a mind of a doctor. And if he has a mind of a doctor, he is a doctor. And that's what, what I'm saying is, when you have a mind of a successful person, you are successful. And, that, and that's why when you learn how to manage your finances or you learn how to make money, this is what happens. You don't have to depend on luck because you got skill now. See, you don't have to go to the casino and just try to, try to get your wealth and your breakthrough. I'm going to become a millionaire. I can feel it. The next 50 bucks. Ha! Ah, sevens! Ha! Ah. 
The reason, the reason you're going to the casino because you've not developed the skill to make money. And even if you did hit it big, you would lose it all because you don't know how to manage it. Because see, more money doesn't make you happy. More money makes you what you are already. So that means if you're a hustler and you're a womanizer, come on, when you make more money, you don't think you're a pimp. Your bad habits, all I do, if you have a drug problem, you're going to die of an overdose. It's going to mess up your whole life because until you change your thinking, money won't fix your life. Money won't fix your marriage. Money, come on, those things won't fix you. It's a mindset. You got to say, no, it's not the outside. It's not my hood. It's my hood in my mind. It's the thoughts that I allow here. I must come to the house of God to learn. I must go to discipleship. I'm not going to discipleship to go through classes. I'm going in there to get transformation the bible says you're transformed by renewing your mind i'm not playing this next year it's gonna be a year of growth i'm learning i'm growing i got my friend rudy here he's on the front row and i always use use an example because i haven't seen him for a long time but now he's coming he came here he goes i just can't believe it he goes, what is all this? He goes, Marco, what? Because I'm not even the same guy, I, I, the same guy he knew. He loved the person he knew. But I've grown from that. I'm not becoming worse. I've grown from there. I'm more loving. I'm more kind. I'm wiser. I'm a sharper leader. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I'm not what I used to be. And I'm telling you where I'm going, you won't recognize me either because I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm learning how to succeed. I'm learning how to unlock. I'm learning how to overcome challenges. I'm a learner. So when I wake up in the morning, this is what I do because I'm a learner. I'm a constant just in my life. If I'm a learner, I have to expose myself to the word. I have to expose myself to leaders that are doing things. If you have a business, you have to expose yourself to successful business people. If, If you have marriage problems, stop hanging around your friends that have marriage problems and talk you into quitting. Why don't you go ahead and hang around some people that make your marriage feel like it's your man. You know what it is. They're, they're living right. Why don't you hang around with them and put some positive peer pressure instead of giving up and justifying with your lady friends. Make up your mind. You might be giving up, but I'm not giving up. Let me find some people that know how to do this right and let me learn from them. It's just time for me to learn something. Your challenge is not meant for you to quit. Your challenge is meant for you to grow. Right? Stop blaming and start changing. While you're blaming people for your pain and your hurt, understand this, nothing's changing. You got to realize, man, I allowed that person in my life. It's my fault too. What are we going to do? Blame them? I allowed it. I'm done. I'm raising my thinking. I'm raising my expectations. I'm raising my preparation. And I'm going to tell you this, young people. Stop stop expecting to have a godly man or woman in your life and you're not it. Uh, What I need is a godly man. Well, you better start being a godly woman. Amen? Come on. If you don't go to the next level, you'll never attract the next level. There's always a next level of thinking. And when you go to the next level of thinking, there's next level opportunities. There's next level blessing. There's next level relationship. There's next level money. There's next level health. There's, come on. There's next level of all of it. You should always be growing. Amen. Hey, someone say amen. All right, if this is your first time here, we just started right now. But, but I will tell you this. You know why we say amen? You say, man, what is the Holy Roller Church? This, this is what it is. When we say amen, this is what we're saying. This is what all we're saying. I'm in agreement and let it be in my life. So when I say amen, I'm in agreement and let it be in my life. I want that wisdom. I want that breakthrough. I want, the, I want to overcome my challenges. I want to become better than I ever have been. I want to change my thinking. I'm a learner. I am not a fool. Fool. 
What's up, fool? No. So, teach a wise person. What happens? They become what? So, when I wake up in the morning, this is my routine. Before I get out of bed, I do sit-ups, leg lifts. Lisa hates it. I shake the whole bed. Uh, uh, uh. I do that every day to stretch and get myself what. Do you know sometimes I'm so sleepy, I don't want to get out of bed? But it's time to get up. You ever been there like, I don't want to get up. And, and, then, and my mind tells me, but it's time to get up. I want to sleep another hour. And do you know sometimes I could sleep an hour, but it's not the right thing to do because it's going to put me, I'm going to be behind in my day. So this is what I've learned. One of the ways for me to wake up is pain. So I just take my place to a place of pain right away. And I start doing these leg lifts when I start, ah! How many hate doing sit-ups? That's the worst, so I just do that. Every morning I just do sit-ups, leg lifts, all that stuff, shaking the bed, and one, two, three. I just figure I'm waking up. Lisa better wake up too. I don't care. If I'm going miserable, her too. That's good. But after that, this is what I do. What I'm going to listen to is very important because I'm going to start off my day learning and growing. So I'm usually putting it right away. It's going to be a book that I'm that on, on online, audible book I'm reading that has to do with an area that I need to learn and gain skill in. I'm listening to a sermon. I'm starting my, I, I'm putting in that same sermon. When I work out, I'm, I'm, I'm same thing. I'm, I'm like reading a book a week because I'm, I'm just going through it. I'm, I'm not just sitting there. I, I'm not, I'm not, I am focused while I'm working out. I'm building my body. I'm building my mind. I'm changing my thinking. I'm getting focused. And this is what happens. Now opportunities, as they rise up, they, they don't pass me by because now I'm prepared to walk into the doors of opportunity and understand there's opportunity all around you. But if you're not spiritually, come on, and mentally prepared, you can't go in the doors. Teach a wise person to become wiser. So I'm just doing that, and that's called discipline. Now, wise people are learners, but this is what the Bible says. Stu stupid people are not learners. And you might be offended. I said, he said the word stupid. Why don't you get offended with your Netflix? Why don't you get offended with all the cuss words that you let slip out of your mouth? Oh, it's getting quiet up in here. It's not a time to go to the bathroom. This is not a time to take a break. This is not a time to leave the building. This is a time to pray. <laughs> this is a time to learn. And this is a time to repent. <laughs> all right, there we go. <laughs> all right. All right. Proverbs 12, 15. Look what it says. Oh, did they put that one up? Oh, they didn't put that one up. I didn't give it to them. Proverbs 10, 12, 15 in the GNT. If they got it in the back, go ahead and put it up. It says this. Stupid people always think they're right. Wise people listen to advice. Well, let me have that scripture. All right. That's... Proverbs 12, 15. Stupid people. You know what it's saying? Stupid people don't learn nothing. You teach them and they say, I don't need to hear nothing. I already, I already know. So understand, you already know. Are you okay with the lack in your life? Are you okay with the pain in your life? Are you, are you, are you okay with the dysfunction in your life? Are you okay with that? Or do you want to get out of it? All I know, there's a lot of areas that still need to improve in my life, but I'm not okay with those areas that I need improvement in. Those areas I'm attacking with knowledge. I want to get God's word. I want to get skill. I'm reading. I'm studying. Because when I learn, I grow. When you learn what, you what? And this last point. The wise will pay whatever price they need to gain understanding. The wise value wisdom over money. They rather, they value wisdom over convenience. They value wisdom over anything this world has to offer 
Because the wise know that if they acquire wisdom, they will have it all. When we walk in wisdom, we will have the things that money can't buy and the things that money can buy. In Proverbs 4, 7, it says, the beginning of wisdom, it, it sounds like a poetry here, is to obtain wisdom. The beginning of being wise is to realize the value of wisdom. I value it. That's why when I'm hearing a teaching, I'm taking notes, I'm putting it on my phone, I highlight the book, I highlight, uh, I highlight on, on my phone, then I go back, I'll look up meanings of words, I want to digest it, and then once I learn it and I apply it, then I start teaching it, I start sharing it, I start helping people succeed because I've learned how to succeed in the area. I know how to do marriage. I've been doing it for 35 years. I'm not saying I am perfect, but I'll tell you this. Me and Lisa are happily, massively atrocious. I don't even know what the right words. <laughs> Grimaliously. I don't even know. That sounds like a good word. In love. Like this. So I'll tell you this. Imagine that your love can grow. Like I love Lisa more now than I've ever loved her in my life. And I'm serious. Like, I love her. I'm attracted to her. She's, she, I, I like, I want her with me all day. Get over here. Because I love her so much. And she has me wrapped around her finger. I'm serious. And she's slick. She ain't here. I got get some counseling. She's slick. She just takes me somewhere. She goes, I really like that. I go, what? Are you going to buy it for you? No, 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 no. I was just telling you I like it. I go, what am I supposed to do with that? Okay, go ahead and get it. Really? I can have it? And I'll tell her, like, don't do that to me. Because you know how much I love you. I'm just going to get it for you. It might not even be in the budget right now, please. But wouldn't you want to have a relationship like that in your life? You could have it. And you're going to, but that, I'm going to tell you this. Stop trying to get those type of relationships doing it your own way. Do you know why some of you can't even get that relationship? Because you know right from wrong and you keep doing wrong. This is what you're doing. You're sleeping with your boyfriend giving him sex and you're not even married to him. And the Bible says that the Bible says, let there be no sexual immorality among you, but yet you want to have a godly marriage living an ungodly life. Well, 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 pastor, why do you have to mention that? I have to mention that because I love you and there's a right way to do relationship and there's a wrong way to do relationship and stop using sex as your glue because sex, it can't be your glue. It has to be your relationship with God it has to be your glue. Yeah, I mean, you that's for marriage. Stop messing up your emotions. Connecting with a whole bunch of people that have no commitment. They don't care about you. They're just using you for pleasure. Uh-oh. He came back. He's ready to go now. He had to take a break. I'm not, I got to take a break. I walk around this building a little bit. But I'm ready to come back. Let's get second half. <laughs> he came back. That's good. <laughs> All right, there we go. So the beginning of wisdom is to obtain wisdom. And look what it says. This is the last verse. Give up everything you have. Give up everything you have to gain understanding. Because if you give up everything you have to gain wisdom and gain skill and get, get knowledge and go to school, this is what's going to happen and change your mindset. This is why you give up everything. Because when you give up everything to gain the knowledge, the knowledge and the wisdom will get you everything. Aren't you tired of being depressed and using weed to balance you? Well, oh, well but Pastor, you don't even know God created herbs. <laughs> Do you drink tea, Pastor? <laughs> Thinking you're smart. 
Don't be using no reverse psychology on me. I know the difference between tea and weed. I know the difference between weed and cocaine. And It's not the same. Do you drink coffee? Yeah, I, I snore coke, but what's the difference? Coca-Cola? This idea... Just because you're convincing yourself on a stupid idea doesn't make you wise or right. There has to be a time in your life that I want you to understand that there's a joy and there's a peace and there's a freedom and there's a happiness that you'll find in the Lord and living right. It will satisfy you more than anything in the world. The happiest people on earth are those that are not only hearing the word, but they're actually doing the word and they're succeeding in life and they're defeating demons and they're overcoming challenges. They go through trials and tribulations, but when they come out, they come out stronger. They come out wiser because if anybody lacks wisdom, just let them ask. I'll give it to you. You'll overcome everything that you're facing. Your trial is not meant to destroy you. Your trial is meant to educate you. God wants to get something to you, but he's saying the thing that you're facing, you need greater wisdom. You need greater skill. I'll take you to the next level if you'll just become a learner. Give Give God some praise. Let's all stand up. Hallelujah. I love you guys. I tell you, I'm going to dismiss in just a second. You know it's not right to leave right now. <laughs> uh, but I, I tell you this, guys. I, my greatest reward is seeing you. Become more like Jesus in thought, action, and results. As a pastor, it hurts me to see people living in unnecessary pain and suffering. And then giving all that pain and suffering to those they love most. Because what you have is what you get. If you just make up your mind, I'm gonna grow. Just make up that decision. Come on, it's only one decision. I'm gonna grow. I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna be teachable. I'm changing. My life is changing. I'm going to show up to church every time the doors open. I'm going to stop complaining about school. Church is school too. I can't afford to miss it. One sermon like this could change my life forever. Can change my business forever. Can change my career forever. Can change my family forever. Can change my marriage forever. Stop justifying it. I'm done. I'm done with the adultery. I'm done with the lust. I'm done with the weed. I'm done with the drinking. I'm done with the lying. I'm, I'm done with the hustling. I'm done with the cussing. I'm just done. I, I'm done giving up. I'm, do, I'm done with this depression. I'm done with this anxiety. I'm done with the cycles of destruction. I'm done with compromise. I mean, I'm here, and I guarantee you this. I'm going to not be where I want to be yet, but I'll guarantee you next year I won't be the same person I am today, and I'm going to keep on growing, and I realize the growth that is already happening to me, and I'm excited about my future because the more I apply, the more successful I am, and the more successful I am, the more influence I have to help others succeed. You have to succeed. People are looking at you. You got to make it. You got to overcome with his help. You can do it. You can make it. You can overcome. God loves you. He's giving you his word. You can have a new life. I'm not here to give you a religion. I'm here to give you a relationship with the creator of the universe. He'll come and live inside of you. He'll begin to teach you. Your life will change. People will recognize you. It can happen today. Do it. Give your life totally. I'm not, I'm not, let go of the pride. If you know you need change, today's the day to change. And you know how you change? It's signing up for change. I'm ready. 
Jesus says, follow me. Be my disciple. You know what he said? Follow me. Be my student. I'll teach you how to live the life you always want to live. You can say yes. I don't care where you're at. You could be a saint worshiper in here. I could tell you, if you're a saint worshiper, you're on the wrong side. And I already know this. If you're a saint worshiper, you're depressed, you're tormented at night, you're confused about your identity. It's all messed up within your head. And I'm letting you know, saints tricking you. And tricks are for kids. That's the scripture. I'm just kidding. You know why I say that? Because there's people in here that actually, I'm a saint worshiper. And, and well, yeah, admit it, that's not a problem. But understand, there's a better life. Why don't you be a, a worshiper of the creator of the heavens and the earth? The one that cast out demons. The one that, come on, come on. The one that loves you. The one that gives you joy. The one that gives you peace. There's a better life. You got to be done with adultery. I'm saying that specifically. I, I just ran into, I, 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 saw, I heard about a website that was on. And they have a website where people, married couples sign up to get together with married men or women to have affairs that are discreet. I don't know nobody would do that. But I found out 65 million subscribers. You know what that means? There's probably someone in here subscribed to that website. You little dirty <laughs> Now, I'm not condemning you. I'm telling you, that's not the way to go. You don't need an affair. Come on, you don't need an affair to make you whole. You need the creator of the universe to make me whole. No girl out there that's incomplete, that can't be faithful to her, her own husband, can do anything to make you whole. There has to be a day that you repent of your sins and say, I'm done doing it wrong. I want to learn what peace is. I want to learn what joy is. I want to learn what purpose is. I want to know God. So I'm going to give you an opportunity. I love this service because there's no other, I mean, the Spanish server, that's like an hour and a half away or something like that. This is your time to make a decision. Be wise. There's only two categories. Either in the wise category or the fool category. Who are the wise? Those that hear the word and apply it. Who are the fools? Those that hear the word don't apply nothing. Don't be stuck. Don't be like that scripture. I know I'm right. Let it go. I'm wrong all the time. I need to grow. That's why I need to learn. I need you. You need me. But give your life to Jesus. I'm going to count to three. And I want, if you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to raise your hand. What you're saying, I want to live for him. I want to teach. I want, I'm done with my sin. I want to follow Jesus. And, and there's two groups. There's one that you are a Christian, but you walked away. And, and you, you have the name on you, but you don't have the lifestyle on you. And this is what happened. You've been hearing, hearing, hearing the word, but you've been doing the opposite. And you know, I've been foolish in my life, and I'm starting to reap re the per repercussions. I'm seeing the depression. I'm seeing the addiction. I'm seeing like, it's like my old life is back. And the devil's telling you, you were never saved, and it's a lie. You were saved, but this is what happened. You started going back and agreeing with the enemy, and he's starting to steal everything you got. And God said, I want to restore your life, and I can restore your life. I know you've made some mistakes, but I, I, but if there's somebody here that you're living under a guilt trip, and God is saying, stop living under a guilt trip. I'll forgive you of every single thing you've ever done. I'll give you a brand new life. I'll give you my best. You still qualify. Come back home. See, Derek, come in. Number two, there's a person in here that if today was your last day on earth, which it could be, you don't know if you'd go to heaven. And I want you to understand this. We're all sinners. There's nobody better than anybody. I'm first to admit my mistakes and my weaknesses. I'll, I'll share them with you while I'm here. But I'm not going to get to heaven because I'm a good person. That means I'm not going to earn heaven. God doesn't grade on the curve. Some people say, I think I'll go to heaven because I'm a good person. No, this is where you are. You're a sinner that needs a savior. I, I, yeah, I, all of us have lied and we've cheated and we've lusted and we've, we've done. As a matter of fact, we wouldn't want, you know, today for us to show some of the things that you did this week on this screen. You know. Who'd like to volunteer for that? Nobody would because there's some stuff in there, things you said, things you've done. It's like, nah, let's not do that. But I'm going to let you know, God already has it all recorded and he wants to erase it. 
but he can't erase it and he can't forgive you unless you say Jesus forgive me erase it off my record set me free give me a new life and you come I'll tell you this your lifestyle will lead to addiction but there's a savior that can set you free who the son sets free is free indeed today's your day to give your life to Jesus and receive the gift of eternal life the Bible says he who has a son has eternal life Jesus dying on the cross means this. There had to be a punishment for the sins of mankind. But God loved us so much that instead of you paying the price and you dying on the cross and you suffering and you going to hell, God says, I love you so much. I'll send my son that's never sinned to take your place, to suffer, to go through the pain, to go through the rejection so you could be forgiven. And I'll give you a gift of eternal life. I'll make you brand new. When Jesus comes in your life, his spirit comes in. It makes you brand new. You know how you come to Jesus? You come with your addiction. I had, I had someone yesterday. They met me somewhere. They met me at, at the men's camp. He, he gave me his knife. He gave me his drugs. He goes, I'm done, man. I'm done. I want a new life. So I prayed with him, took those drugs, threw them away. I didn't use them. Where are the drugs at? So I said, we threw them away. That's what you're supposed to do. You understand that, right? <laughs> Some of you guys would think, well, this is a come up. No, I don't know why I did that. God loves you guys so much. I'll tell you, you'll, I've never heard someone come to Jesus and say, I regret I came to Jesus. They all said, why did I do this earlier? What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Give your life to Jesus today. I'm going to count to three. You're saying, Pastor, I want to know if I were to die, I'd go to heaven. I want to give my life to you. I'm done doing it my way. Or I'm a Christian, but I back say, that's time for me to come home. I want to be forgiven and start over, and I'm going to start living this wise life. One, raise your hand. This is your moment. This is your time of action. Wise people take action. Two, and when I say three, quickly raise your hands all over this building. Three, give your life to Jesus. Recommit. Proud of you, baby. I see the hand there. I, proud of you, young man. Proud of you right there. Proud of you right there. There you go. Awesome. 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 Right over there. Anybody else over here? See the hand over there. Proud of you. Way in the back. Way in the back. Way in the back. There we go. I want you to do one more thing. I want you to leave your seat. And I want you to come up here. Those that raise their hands. Even if you don't raise your hands. You're saying, I need a new life. This is what we're doing. Give me the honor and privilege to pray with you. This is what you're saying. I'm leaving my old life in those seats. And I'm going to start walking towards wisdom. I'm going to start walking towards Jesus. I'm going to start walking towards success. I'm going to start walking towards restoration. I'm going to start walking towards re recovery. It's happening now. Walk towards freedom. Ask your neighbor, you want to go up there or go up there with you? If you want to go up there or go up there with you. Come on, let's give him a hand, church. This is someone's son. This is someone's daughter. This is someone's wife. This is someone's husband. Come on, we're saving marriages. We're saving families today. We're saving lives today. Come on, if you have a spirit of suicide, you're struggling with suicide, you're thinking, man, it's better that I give up. My family don't need me. You come up here right now and get set free. We need you. Suicide, go, come on. Come on, don't agree with suicide. Come up here right now. There's somebody hearing, and you were hearing the voice telling you, man, your family would be better off without you. You better tell that devil, no, no, no. Get, get up here right now. Arrowhead, Pomona, everybody. All right. Come on, church. Freedom. 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 Hallelujah. I'm telling you, man, God loves you. He brought you here. And there's nothing that you've ever done that He will not forgive you of, cleanse you, and set you free, okay? Jesus did not come for goody two shoes people who never sinned. I'm not no goody two shoes. I need Jesus. Without Jesus, I'm probably more like a devil. He changed my life. And he's changing my life. Every day. Okay? Jesus not come to judge you and put you down. He came to lift you up, okay? He's for you. Someone is going to get healed from mental illness right now. And I'll tell you why. 
the devil tried to take over your mind because when he tried when he took over your he's trying to take over your mind because there's a purpose in your life there's a destiny for your life and God says I've not given you a spirit of confusion but I've given you a spirit of love and a sound mind God's going to heal your mind today in the name of Jesus there's someone here that you're going to forgive because people there's some people really, that they really hurt you you have to forgive them God's going to forgive you but you're going to forgive them too okay and he said God give me love for them they don't deserve it but if I forgive I let it go I gotta let it go seating me up on the inside it's causing me nightmares I can't do it I'm making me angry I just can't do this for so much weight you gotta let it go and when you forgive them understand this you're not letting them off the hook that's what you're doing you're letting yourself off the hook okay they hurt you they abuse you I get it no one's not denying that but it's time to let it go come on church come on we can never get come on we can never get come on take this for granted people up here getting touched by God they're getting set free come on demons are leaving them that meant to kill them and destroy them the plans of the enemies we're voiding right now every plan of the devil we cancel it now in the name of Jesus okay when you come to Jesus hugs you he forgives you it's gonna be and this is what he would say to you it's gonna be okay I'm with you but what are, you know what I did because I know but I've forgiven you it's off the record anybody that's in Christ is a new creation and I'm gonna fill you with my spirit to give you power new desires you're gonna join the church you're gonna grow in the church you're gonna join the classes everybody sign up for growth conference let's pack this place out you're going to be part of a family that's going to live forever. And this family, I love blood family. But spirit family, we're really down for each other. We're, I mean, we'll, we'll die for one of like, don't you mess with my sister. I'll, no. <laughs> Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. God's spirit is here all over you. Bow your heads. I want you to repeat after Say, Jesus, today I've heard you. I've heard you call me that you want me to follow you that you love me I know that I've been doing life my way I'm so tired I ask you now to forgive me of all my sins I've hurt myself I've hurt others I've made a lot of mistakes but I thank you that today is my brand new day I receive forgiveness I receive freedom from all addiction bad habits and I forgive everyone that has hurt me I let it go now anger leave me now hate leave now depression leave now suicidal thoughts go Lord I receive your Holy Spirit your peace your joy I confess you as my Lord and Savior I'll live for you for the rest of my life in Jesus name I pray and I thank you amen let's give the Lord a hand we're gonna pray with you sign up for holy warriors come on we love you no one leave without getting prayer we want to make sure we connect with you your next step next wednesday this wednesday we have service next sunday i'm going to continue talking about growth and learning i got some things some keys for you next sunday bring some friends there's a lot of people would love to hear this message bring them in they'll never know and you'll never know they'll come unless you invite them god bless you remember this church if god is for you there's no one to come against you have a great great afternoon